Hi guys, it's Gage, and in this video, we're going to be going through how to make your own stock monitor for the website Very. Now, the steps I'm gonna teach you apply for most sites. Now, some sites will have high amounts of bot protection in which you'll have to do various different things. But uh, for most websites, this should work. So uh, I've started off by importing the packages we're gonna be using. So requests, that's to uh, get the page data. Beautiful soup, we're gonna use that to actually pass the uh, page data that we get. So basically just find the bits that we want. Discord webhook to send uh, the stock notification to Discord and CSV to go through a CSV file that we're gonna to use to store the links that we want to monitor. So first things first, we need to set up our Discord webhook. So you just do webhook equals Discord webhook and then we need to get our webhook URL. So the way we do that is we can head over to Discord, go to a channel that we own, we can press edit channel, integrations and create webhook. So now we've got it here, we'll name this one very and we'll copy the webhook URL. So let's paste our webhook URL here and that's our webhook sorted. So now we need to set up our recurring loop. So it's something that's going to keep checking the stock day and night, as long as it's running. So we're gonna set a variable always on to true. And I'm also gonna set B is equal to one. We'll talk about that one later. So while always on, uh, so it's while always on is equal to true and always on is always gonna be equal to true. We will uh, first open our file that is for uh, storing the links that we want to monitor. So I've got this file here called links.csv. You can see we just have the link as the header and then the links that we're trying to monitor. So this is the one that is in stock, as we can see here, and this is the one that isn't in stock. When there's a non-in stock link on Very, it just takes you to a menu page. So we go back here, we're going to open links.csv and we're gonna open it in a read format. And then we're going to, to read it with our csv.reader. And then we are going to get the number of entries. So we'll call it num entries using the length of the list of reader. So this just takes the length of whatever the list is of reader. So in this case, it's three because there's three entries here. Cool. And we're going to use that to make sure we can go back to the start, to the top of the list when we're at the end of the list and then we do file.close, cool. So if B, this is gonna be our variable that tracks what entry we are on in uh, the list. If B is equal equal to the number of entries, then we're gonna set B is equal to one. So essentially, anytime we get to the bottom of the list, we're going to just set our counter variable to the top of the list again. This will probably make more sense as we go on. Now we're going to open our links file again and we're going to use the reader. And then we're going to just set our data variable as the list of reader. And then we can set our link as data B. So essentially what this does is we've made our links.csv file into a list and we're gonna access the B entry, which is can be one, two, or three. So uh, this would be the first entry li link, which would be zero. And then uh, number one would be this first link and number two would be this link. So now we need to set up the actual scraping of the site. Now we figured out what our link is. So we can do r equals request.get link. Since it's a CSV, I think we have to put a zero here because it's the first and the first row uh, of the B column. Uh, so R equals request.get link. We probably want to set up something called a header here. So headers are what uh, websites use to determine what kind of machine you're using. So whether that's a phone or a laptop or a Mac or whatever, uh, they use that so they can show you different content. Now, if you don't set up a header, what might happen is it's so obvious that your request is coming from a bot that they'll actually block the request. So here we've set up the user agent 
uh, and it's we've just set up a Windows 10 machine here. You can use whatever you want. You could just Google top 10 user agents and just copy one there. But typically, if you have any of them, they'll work. So now we can use Beautiful Soup uh, with r.content. So that's just the HTML of our request r, and we're using the HTML parser. So now we need to find our various uh, things that we want to find. So we probably want to find the title. We probably want to find the price and we probably want to find out if it's in stock. Probably in stock first is the most important one. Uh, so let's pop this here. So to find whether it's in stock or not, we'll head over to the very page of this in stock product and we will right click and press inspect. What this is going to do is bring up all the HTML for us. And uh, if I just control F to bring up the search, I'm just going to search for in stock and see what see what comes up. So I'll just scroll, just keep hitting enter until we find something kind of interesting. Uh, I see availability in stock here. I think there might be something else around here. In stock. Probably not that one. So I'm just looking for something simple that we can kind of scrape here. I think our best bet is this one. Is link item prop availability and then in stock here. So uh, the way we're going to do that is in stock is equal to and then we're going to do soup dot find and then we're going to take our first uh, elements in the HTML, which is link. You see here on the left, link. And I'm going to put that there. And then we need to narrow our search for the HTML. So then we need our kind of sub element, which is item prop. So we can copy that. Item prop availability. And then we can do dot get. And what element do we need from here? The href. Awesome. So then we can do if in stock is equal to the schema in stock here. Uh, then we know it's in stock and we can do the rest. Uh, obviously, if it isn't in stock, then there's no point actually getting the title and the price. So same thing here. We just need to do soup.find and we need to find the first element of the uh, title. If I just search the title here, essential everyday hoodie brilliant we don't want the very we'll find another one it's maybe better here meta so our first html element here is meta our second one we'll have is name is description so we have name description and we're going to do dot get content that should have our title. And the last thing we want is the price. So same thing, soup.find. And where can we find the price here? So again, I'll just search £11. First thing we find here, meta name, Twitter data one, and the content's £11. So we can have meta, we'll have name here. We'll have Twitter data, and then do we still want the content? Yeah, the content. I think actually using this for the in stock will be more reliable, this meta Twitter data too. So we're just going to change that meta name Twitter data to, and we're going to do content. Cool. So we've got the in stock from here, we've got the price from here, and we have the title. May as well actually use all the meta tags uh, while while we're here for the title as well. So meta well, property and then OG title. And then we're just fetching the content. Cool. So uh, now we've scraped everything. If it's in stock, we need to do our Discord webhook notification. Now I've got this saved in this file here just so I can explain what it means. Uh, we'll We'll change this to product name because otherwise it interferes with the Discord webhook title variable. Uh, we've got the title of our Discord webhook, which is just the top bit. And then we've got the description here, which I've got the product name, 
the very link and the price. Uh, you can set the color, but it's important that you add your Discord embed here. So you need to make sure you do embed and then all of the variables that you just set up here. Uh, the image, oh, that's one last thing that we forgot to do. We'll set up the image. So let's just find that. It should be somewhere here. Yeah, meta property and then the image is here. So we just got to make sure that this is property OG image. Oh, brilliant. The AI did it for us. It's coming for our jobs. Uh, we've got the URL, the image URL set as our image here and uh, our footer. And it's important you add this webhook dot remove embed at the end because otherwise uh, it will end up sending multiple messages. Cool. Uh, we need to make sure that we're doing b is equal b plus is equal to one. And actually, best practice here is putting everything into a try variable. I mean, well, not variable, but try. Uh, the reason behind this is if you're, uh, if any of these requests fail, you don't want the script to crash. If you put it in a try, if the request fails, it will just uh, move on to the next thing. And we can just, the reason we put this B plus is equal to one is so that we're always looking for the next item in the list. I think this is just B, that's my, that's my gut feeling, but we'll, we'll run it and we'll find out. Cool, uh, let's start this, we'll right click. Something we also wanna do is add a, a sleep here. So if you don't add a sleep, you'll probably end up getting banned from the website and that's no good. A, a sleep between three and five seconds is uh, usually safe. Yeah, so that's out of range. Let's try this. Should have made some print statements actually to see if it's uh, to see to see where it's running, but we'll we'll see if our Discord webhook comes through here. Okay, let's find out what's happening. Uh, we'll just add a few print statements here. We'll print r dot content. We'll print in stock because maybe the in stock value isn't. Oh, I know what is wrong. A lesson in debugging here, guys. So we will print these things just so we know exactly what's going on. Print in stock. We'll print the product name, the price, and the image so you can see it's working. Uh, but the reason why nothing pinged through is because we're still using the old in stock uh, check. What we should be looking for is in stock. Cool, we'll run. So we've got our link from our CSV here. You can see it's marked it as in stock. And now it's checking this one, our next uh, item in the list, and it's not in stock. And then it checks back on our in stock one. So you can see that it went through the list, started here, went here, realized there's no more, went back here. Now, if we look at our Discord, we have very restock, the title, the link, the price, and the image. Uh, if you didn't want this, the same notification keeping on pinging, you can add like a little text file or CSV of items that have pinged previously, and then just check that. The, the way that would look is uh, you could do something like F is equal to open 24 hours dot text. The reason I'm calling it 24 hours is you probably want to clear it every 24 hours. And then you can do f.write the link and then f.close. And then up here before you do the try, you can just do f is equal to open 24 hours. You can read the lines, close the file. And then if uh, link is in lines, mm, actually you do lines is equal to f.read. If link is equal to lines, then you can just do continue. Well, B plus is equal to one, continue. And what the continue do, it will just skip this item of the list and you'll just move straight on to the next one. That way you won't get the same item pinging on repeat. Cool, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This can be a easy template for you guys to use for 
any other website as well. So, you know, Ryman or, you know, various other websites or anything you want to monitor, you can just use this script and it'll work. So uh, thank you very much, guys. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. And if you have anything you want to see next, just ask. I just might do it. Like, subscribe. Thank you.